Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. Today, I wanna to talk about emergency preparedness. Actually, now that the weather is kinda of calming down and warmed up over the I last- I don't know if I would go with warm. Well, it's warmer now than it has been. You know, it's not <laughs> negative temperatures. But Poor. now that the weather's kinda of getting back to, to kinda of decent, it's not, it is kind of cloudy and overcast out there, but it's not dangerous, dangerously cold right now. And we're not dealing with negative temperatures and stuff. I wanted to talk about emergency preparedness because during the winter storms over the last few weeks, we've been going, you know, as we've been able to get around and stuff, we've been going to the grocery store for, you know, just regular run of the mill stuff that over the last couple of weeks we've been going to the store as we can and just picking up like you know cake and <laughs> I, I think one one time we went chocolate. on your birthday we got cake and chocolate yeah. and you know some miscellaneous stuff that I mean we might not have otherwise needed but was nice to have or whatever but we had everything that we needed here at home for the for the in preparation for the storms and bad weather. And we noticed how much people didn't prepare. Like, you, I think you mentioned, what's what's the big secret with... Bread, milk, and eggs. Because... Of, or I mean, no, toilet paper. Yeah, toilet paper was one of those things that they were out of. And it's just like, what you know, when, when bad weather's coming, why don't people prepare early? You know, why don't, why do they wait? the the day after the storm's already here to go to the grocery store or, or the you know the night before right right no I, I understand perishables like milk and eggs and stuff like that stuff that will go bad over over time and people need to get that stuff in before the storm but if you know a storm's coming like in a couple days don't wait till the last minute to go like you know and if you do expect some delays expect some hassles expect them to be expect out of things expect some scarcity right and so i i wanted to kind of connect with our viewers and, and listeners here and talk about that kind of stuff because i myself i like to be prepared for a lot of things and i i'm not i know we're not as prepared as i like to be but we are as prepared as we can afford to be right yeah. now <laughs> so uh during during the uh, bad weather and stuff, you know, a lot of people, w this is a do-over show, actually. We had recorded this once before, but... During the storm. During the storms, and it, it, some of the th some of the content that we had, had recorded, it seemed like maybe I might have been calling a p few people out. Now, I wasn't. <laughs> it was actually, I we would record that before I had even known about some of the stuff. Yeah, like, we didn't realize, you know, so many people we knew... Their pipes froze. Right. And and it wasn't, I didn't say anything negative about pipes freezing because, of course, that can happen to us. Yeah. But I, I did say some things that, you know, some people might be like, oh, you felt like you were calling me out there a little bit. And I don't mean to do that at, at any time. It's, I'm just speaking my opinion here. And, you know, like I've said in other shows, you know, if the if the shoe fits, wear it, you know. And I wear, I wear my shoes with pride. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, you know, during winter storms, especially with pipes freezing, that can be a huge issue. And one of the things that we had discussed about in the previous recording was the water shut off. And mm -hmm. you don't know where that's at. And now you do, obviously, because I told you, hey, it's, you know, behind, <laughs> actually back behind this wall right, behind right here. Me. So um, that's one of those things that I know right away, as soon as I'm in a, you know, in a place where I'm going to stay, I know where the emergency, 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 emergency water shutoff is. I know where the, the water main is, where the shutoff at the water main is. I know where to find that and the electrical panels. And I, I that's the first thing I scope out anywhere I Anywhere I'm going to rent or stay or, you know, like even hotel rooms sometimes have electrical panels on the walls and it's nice to know you can get in there if you need to, I guess. But um, if a fire starts in a hotel, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> but we, that, that was one of those things that we had discussed during that recording that 
you know, several people that we know their pipes froze and that's a pretty common thing, I guess, is for people to not know where their water shutoff is. And the people that I, I was talking to later on after we recorded, they obviously knew where their water shutoff was. Well, but, and I always thought it was, you know, more of a common situation in older homes. But then I found out after talking to some folks at work that it um, can be a situation in newer ones as yeah, well. Yeah, it's more of a more of the temperature type deal and the the outside situations of like, you know, our water sources are on the outside of the house. There's no basement to this house. And so they might be four feet deep out in the yard, but when they come into the house, they're not that deep. And of course we got water lines on the outside walls and water spigots outside. That's a really common place for water to start freezing. So if you could insulate that water spigot on the outside of your house somehow, maybe with some heated electrical tape, a lot of homes have those disconnects or shut off valves on the inside of the house for the water spigots as well. So that's another option there. But that is one thing that, that we, that we found it, uh, other people ran into during this extreme cold here in the Midwest, you know, here in the Midwest, we're not used to that, mm-hmm. you know, negative 15, negative 20. We're not used to that like they are up North. So a lot of buildings down here aren't, aren't insulated against that type of weather. And it's not, it's not really code. So our house is double insulated and it was built with a purpose in mind as efficiency. Mm-hmm. So you know, they over engineered and over insulated this house on purpose. And I talked to the builder about it. And I wonder if that's because it's all electric. I, yes. And that was one of the reasons that he'd, he'd said, you know, we wanted to keep the cost down because we wanted to be all, all electric there. And which that's another thing that hinders emer- emergency preparedness. We don't have any gas lines coming in here. So if we lose power, we don't have heat. Yeah, we can't like... Leave the oven on right. with the door open. Right, which is which is not safe, by the way. <laughs> that's not a safe I thing to do. But in an emergency, like that's what we did. <laughs> in an emergency, you kind of may have to use your stove to heat your house, and that's an option we don't have because we don't have a gas line coming to the house. We don't even have a gas service, mm-hmm. and so I, I I like to be as prepared as possible. And then winter storms came. A lot of I got a few giggles when. I said we were going to get fuel for the generator and it was like, well, you know, I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it, you know, have it be in an emergency situation at one o'clock in the morning and those kind of temperatures and not have any power at all. It's scary. I mean, with like, you wouldn't even be able to sleep because you're BiPAP and solely CPAP. And- right. Right. And we have, we have all those. Um, I have a BiPAP, Sully has a CPAP, and then, you know, obviously there's heat in the house. It wouldn't take but a couple hours in here to chill down to dangerous levels and those kind of temperatures, negative temperatures. And a trick that I use when we don't have power, um, when we run into situations in winter storms, one, one of the tricks that I use is make your space smaller. It's easier, it's like we have an open floor plan in our house and it's easier to shut ourselves in one room shut the water off so it doesn't freeze you know shut ourselves in one room crank some heat up with with our emergency generator which is a small generator i think it's like 1800 running watts like 2300 starting watts which isn't it's not much i don't even think it's enough to run um our our heater is 1500 watts so that's really all we can have plugged in if we're going to use that uh, you know if we need heat so which is okay. I mean, heat really is all I'm worried about. We do have battery backup for the So phones. how much is our refrigerator then? Oh, uh, it's not, it's not 1500 Watts. Oh, so it's not as, that's weird. Well, you know, when the, when the refrigerator kicks on the, the generator pipes up for a second, but it, yeah. it's just like, remember when we ran the microwave on it, oh, it sounded like, <laughs> yeah, well, I popped a fuse mm, Yeah. running the microwave. It's only 1100 Watts and we got an 1800 Watt generator. And when we started up the microwave, it, it popped a fuse because I had Wi-Fi TV plugged into it and a lamp. Yeah. You know, so 
<laughs> it's too much. Which sometimes, you know, during the during the summer months or you know spring months, when we've lost power for a few hours or whatever, and we'll, you know, I've always got the generator ready. Um, you know, so the grass is growing and stuff. I have fuel for the generator because it's a gas generator, and uh, so if we lose power during the spring or summer months, you know, I. I bring out the generator and plug the TV in, plug a lamp in, you know, have all the modern conveniences of, of, you know, so nobody gets bored, but I don't, I can't run the air conditioner or, or anything like that. But so I, I like to be prepared during those situations just in case. And one, one way I'm not prepared is, you know, perishable. Uh, we have, not we don't have any non-perishable food items well we do have some, some but not, but not enough. enough uh the department of energy has a list of things you might have ready available on hand you know just in case those emergencies do happen and that list includes things like flashlights batteries candles you know a list something as simple as a list of utility companies that you can call their emergency phone numbers if you've got a gas leak if you've got a water leak out in the front yard you know that you can't find your main call the water company electric company you got a, a wire down on the house you know those are all it, that's a good idea to have is list of emergency contact numbers for your for your utility companies and uh, so um, one of the things on that list is non-perishable food items you know that you can have in in case of outages like uh can, yeah canned goods work really well and, and one thing that i like is is tuna packets they have single serving tuna packets i mean you, those don't take up much space just you know and they're like a dollar or two dollars a piece you well can, and now they have two like the little Instead of having like the long pack of crackers, they have like little short stubby packs of crackers. Right, but those are pair like uh, those do go bad. They don't have a long shot, oh. and they might have a couple months shelf life. But yeah, that's really I would think that they would be longer. Maybe I'm, I don't know. I I don't I'm not positive on that. We don't have any crackers for me to. <laughs> I had just scope seen out. I'd seen a picture with like non perishable food items, and it had like your tuna canned goods, and it had. Uh, the a Ritz. sleeve of crackers, yeah. Little crackers and like fruit cups. Oh yeah, that that stuff doesn't. It's sitting in that little sugary mm -hmm. syrup, and it I, I, it does stay good for a long time. Yeah. But we, one thing that we don't have is water. We have access to clean water, and our city, the way it runs, is they pull the water out of the ground. They don't really have to have power because it flows naturally but we have to have power the city has to have power in order for that to to pump around the city so if the if, if the the power or the water company doesn't have power we're not going to have water so yeah you know if if a disaster strikes you know like a tornado on the north end of town you know we're not going to have we're not going to have water here yeah and uh so i we don't have an emergency stash of water you know the department of energy says we need probably a gallon of water per person per, per day. day and so with us that's a that's, lot of water yeah that's like five four or five gallons per day and so we'd have to store a bunch of water like a pallet of water for two weeks but i i'd like to have some water just in case but in in you would hate to have that much water and have it spoil on you or whatever. So, you know, it, it, keep, in, keep in mind, you if you can learn and use your surroundings, you know, learn where your local water sources are. If you have any creeks running through town, you know, one, one good way to find fresh water, don't drink out of the middle of the creek. <laughs> find where it's coming out of the ground. If you can do that, and I know it's, you know, if, if in the middle of winter in the Midwest, it's not going to be a creek anymore. It's going to be ice. But those are some things that you can do, like down south. You know, if you don't have any water, find your water sources, you know, and don't drink out of the middle. Find where it's coming out of the ground. 
you'll be okay. Like there's all kinds of natural waterfalls and stuff. And you think that waterfall, hey, look, looks pretty clean. But no, there, there could be a deer peeing in it. That's upstream. right. That's right. <laughs> so. Well, and it'd probably be a good idea too. Like if you do store water and non-perishable food items, like say in your garage or something, it'd probably be a good idea to keep like also a list of like this item Things is good until have. this date. Right. Or and whatever. Write that down on there. Rotate your stock, you know, <clears throat> stuff like that. And if you're, if you're bringing in emergency water, take out emergency water. Yeah. So, you know, if you go into the store, if you do keep emergency water, you can go to the store and buy your, your, I think the, uh, I think there are some websites also with emergency storage water like water that's good for emergency storage stays good for a couple of years like uh, canned yeah, water yeah canned water and that's always an option as well but you know just keep in mind you know if if an emergency does happen and you have all that water don't drink over a gallon a day or you're going to run out mm-hmm. so i don't even drink a gallon of water i mean nowadays. think <laughs> think about think about when disasters happen natural disasters specifically here in the united states i think it was uh was it 2015 or 2005 we had hurricane katrina think about you know the devastation that came along with that and people there was no way to prepare for the magnitude of that but it, it took the united states government like a week or two to get water to the superdome you know that's that's embarrassing you know, but since that kind of stuff does happen, you know, you have to take those as, as a learning lesson and it is an example. Nobody's going to be there to help you. You've got to help yourself. You got to prepare yourself. And if you're not ready, something bad might happen, you know, and you know, God forbid you have a tornado come through town. Think about how long it really takes to get the utilities back, get power, to get water to get any help at all like you know after there was a big storm a couple years ago i think it was called irma uh hurricane irma i'm wanting to say that's and i could be wrong but you know some people down in florida i talked to that had went down to help they were talking about how it took two weeks to get any help at all and after the first day it was impossible to get in and out there was so many emergency vehicles. There was so many helpers and volunteers. It was possible to get in and out of, of that disaster zone. So if you didn't know anybody there and didn't have any help already, you weren't getting out to get it. And it wasn't there, obviously. All the stores are gone, you know, and it's sad. It is incredibly sad. If something happens to our power grid, think about how many people in cities don't have access to food that would last longer than a day, you know? Um, and it's, it's just terrible. If, if some kind of major disaster were to happen to the entire country all at once, we'd lost a power grid. A lot of people would die because they're just not ready. Well, what about like, so gas pumps, are gas pumps all like electronic? Everything's electric. So like it wouldn't uh, flow naturally. No, no. I mean, there are some, there are some systems that might, work on gravity i was just thinking about like large cities and transportation and not having so the ability to get fuel i think places like in new york they have natural gas flowing into the buildings and they use boilers mm-hmm. to heat and i mean we're talking massive boiler systems and i think new york also runs boiler systems for their st- like a uh, uh, steam systems to keep their streets clear mm-hmm. i'm not positive on that i could be wrong I, you know, I know it's a thing in other countries to run steam through the streets to keep them Clear. ice free and snow free. But anyway, the, the those major cities like Chicago, New York, if if anything, like think about if New York's power grid went out, just New York, just the city of New York, not even the state, the city of New York, if they lost power for two weeks, there'd be a lot of dead people. Because you can't make it without water, you can't make it without food. There's always already a giant homeless population there, and if you add the need for food for an entire city of eight million people, like Manhattan Island's eight million people there, that that's a lot of people to feed 
in an emergency situation. So if you don't prepare yourselves for something that might happen, I'm not talking about end of the day scenario. I'm not talking about, you know, zombie apocalypse prepping. I'm just talking about every day storms, you know, uh, emergency situations like, uh, wildfires, wildfires, um, hurricanes, uh, storms, floods. W- uh, winter storms, floods, all <laughs> kinds of stuff. Anything can happen. The wind could blow and you could lose your power for mm-hmm. an afternoon and in the right circumstances that might mean life or death. Yeah. You know, and, and just like last week we had those bitter cold temperatures. Um, what was it, uh, Two weeks ago, the Kansas City played. Kansas City Chiefs played Miami. Miami, in I think it got down to negative, negative eight, um, negative seven, negative eight. I think some of the, a lot of the fans and some of the players had frostbite, mm-hmm. you know, from a game, and that's you know the the tickets were like thirty five bucks to go see a wild card weekend showdown between Kansas City and Miami and it was 35 bucks for a ticket because the temperatures were so low and some of those folks got frostbite and I'm sure a lot of them got sick and and not not out of lack of preparedness but because it was just so cold it was dangerously cold now and imagine in a scenario where you lose power for an entire weekend, don't have any gas, don't have, you don't have a generator. How are you going to keep yourself warm? What would you do? I'd layer up for one. Stay out of the wind. Yeah, make your space wind. smaller, so, you know. Keep I, my feet dry. I try to hunker down. If I was by myself, I'd try to hunker down in a closet and try to warm that area up with body heat or something, Yeah. you know, but worst case scenario, you're going to find me frozen in a closet because <laughs> <laughs> the temperature is that cold that there's, you can't even make, I don't, I'm not even sure you can make a closet safe without heat, but that's not, you know, that's. You should be in there smoking cigarettes, huh? Oh yeah. Well, you know, if I was in there smoking cigarettes, I'd have enough, you know, I'd, I'd have enough sense to go somewhere and start a fire for a little bit, I guess. <laughs> but, Just uh, not in the house. Uh, w- hey, that's, a, uh, that's one, of the, uh, one of the things that the Department of Energy said on their website was, hey, find your locations where your, your, your hot and uh, cold weather stations are. So, you know, in the wintertime, it'd be cold weather stations, and you'd be wanting to find a place to heat up. You know, if you lose power at home during the winter time, and it's not really that terrible, not really that dangerous, you just need to warm up for a little bit. Go walk around Walmart if it's open. You know, find some place that's open for 24 hours. If it's the middle of the night, go in there, heat up for a little bit. Don't, uh, you know, don't sit in your house and freeze. But right, you got to keep moving. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm I'm always worried about stuff like that and being prepared during emergency situations. And one, one of the, I keep saying one of the issues. I got to get away from saying one of those things, one of those issues. I got to get away from saying that. But uh, a situation that we ran into one winter time, we lost power. It was a pretty pretty bad storm we lost power for like three days uh two or three days and we had generator going we had the heat was warm enough it was uncomfortable to sleep in but we could layer up during the day and Mm -hmm. and be okay and a a situation we ran into is showers we're all electric here no gas for the water heater and and uh so we didn't have any hot water and we couldn't take freezing cold showers so we went to a truck stop, took showers at the truck stop. There's lots of them around here. We have, we have two down south. We have a, uh, one or two up north. We're surrounded just by... right down the street. Yeah, we're in the Midwest, <laughs> so there's truck stops everywhere. But if, if you find yourself in a situation where you're not going to have... You, you don't know when you're going to have power and you're starting to stink a little bit, 
take it take a shower at a truck stop i think right now down the street they're five bucks some truck stops out out west at like 10 15 dollars for a shower but that's cheap out there mm -hmm. but if you got to do what you got to do take a shower you'll find you know go find a, a warm place to hang out or a cool place to hang out whatever the case may be whether it's summer or winter but i i find it i find it a lot easier to when the, I know winter's coming, obviously it comes every year. And so I find it easier to kind of prepare myself a little slowly over time over, you know, I might start preparing in like September, you know, and if we don't use those provisions throughout the winter time, I'll use them after winter is over and we'll start over again the next September. But I, I like to be prepared and I like to be prepared ahead of time. And why wait to the last minute to do things like that? And then you're going, well, I wish I had this. I wish I had that. Or depending on the government to come save you, nobody's coming to help. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, like I said, it take, takes 10 days to get water to the Superdome, you know, and that was, that was when FEMA was not a, underfunded. So, you know, it is, it's a strange dichotomy between people thinking they're ready and when stuff actually happens, because when things actually happen, we find even the people who are prepared for emergencies aren't even prepared. You know, anything can happen. Like, I think I'm as prepared as I can be, and then our pipes freeze. You know, stuff like that happens. We could be stuck here for weeks without water because our pipes froze. You know, right now we don't have any money in case of an emergency for like, you know, pipes freeze and bust open water shut off to the house till we can get it fixed yeah and it just drives me nuts how some people aren't as prepared as they could be in a situation and then they call me and ask me for help and i'm like why, why didn't you prepare why didn't you get ready you know and or we go to the store and see a mad dash for for bread you know and i get it people you run out of bread but who who eats that much bread really like you clean well, out the whole walmart we have two walmarts here nobody had any bread yeah well my thing is the it's milk not that i needed bread i don't understand the milk you like, know because i mean maybe now I'm that wrong. we know milk's not even that great for you like maybe i'm wrong but i just don't i don't see a whole bunch of people drinking milk anymore like we don't no. even buy it to drink we just use it to no. cook with well we try to we're trying to watch our girly figures here, yeah. you know, but uh, when you're right, we, we don't drink milk that or often. Being lactose intolerant. A lot of people use it to cook with, Yeah, you know, so uh, it's, I, I kind of get milk, eggs, bread, because those are the things that don't last long. You know, what, what's a gallon of milk last two weeks? Maybe. So before yeah. a storm comes, you know, go get a gallon of milk just in case we need it. I get it. You know, the, but those are the last minute preparations that people need is the eggs, milk, bread. But we were running into things like they didn't have anything. Like butter. Uh, like, well, I'm trying to think like they didn't, that whole thing, like they said, their the, freezer the, section yeah, was the down. Yeah, the freezer section but, was down, but they didn't have any anywhere else yeah, either. Like cottage cheese, yeah. you know, sour cream, yeah. biscuits. There was a lot of things that they were Yogurt. out of. Uh, whole shelves of uh, cookies were gone. Yeah. That whole shelves of cookies. And I've never seen that before, not even during milk the pandemic. Cookies, that's what people are doing. They're having milk and cookies. All the Oreos were gone. <laughs> I was offended. <laughs> but, uh, well, uh, you know, that they say that's milk's favorite cookie. Yeah. So all the milk was gone. They had to take all the cookies, yeah, too. Apparently, it's, people were like, we're going to hunker down and have milk and cookies. Maybe a sandwich here and there. But, you know, power outages across the U.S., whether it be to weather, wildfires, interference from plants and vegetation, they can last sometimes minutes, up to a couple weeks. But in my experiences, power outages in the winter and summer months can be downright dangerous simply due to temperatures. Mm -hmm. And the mad dash for the grocery <laughs> store to get cookies and stuff, you know, if, if the roads are bad, stay home. Yeah. You know, go get your cookies before the storm. Especially if you're not comfortable in driving in winter weather. Like, that's what drives me crazy. Like It's people that don't have to be out, home. but they are out anyway. Yeah, like, like the people that are out joyriding and don't know how to drive. And, yeah. and then they run into your car and then, oh, I'm sorry. Well, you know, 
it's a little too late now. Like, you should check on 80-year-old grandma and make sure she's not out, you know, the driving new, to her hair appointment. Like grandma doesn't need tuna. <laughs> <laughs> or you take grandpa a cheeseburger. Hey, we've done storm. that. You know, I storm. <laughs> uh, what year was that? Was it 07? Oh, yeah. 2007. It was a pretty good ice storm that we had around here. And my grandparents is their their power their their power line got ripped off their house and like everything was working but it was unsafe so the power company Shut you know off. it was unsafe for the power company to even work so they just disconnected everything till they could get a contractor out there to fix it but my grandparents had a uh, fireplace in their basement and and this fireplace hadn't been used in (laughs) many, many, many years, but they had had it fixed uh, a couple years before this ice storm. And grandpa wanted to stay at the house, make sure the pipes didn't freeze kind of stubborn thing. They, they thought that it would be, you know, would be a short time when it got fixed. He ended up having to leave the house and go to a hotel, which they should have done in the first place, disconnect the water and go. But, you know, it, it, it was what it was. And grandpa, he said, I want to stay. I want to, it shouldn't take long. And so we, we took a load of wood from my mom's house to my grandpa's house. And then we went and bought him a thermos. We went of coffee. Went and got him some coffee and, and some, some McDonald's and 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 we were. You need anything else, Grandpa? No, I'm good. It's warm. And, you know, I don't know what he was doing. We he, he was, was just sitting he was there, sitting down he? there, with his boots on, and his hat, and he had a blanket around him, and just eating his cheeseburgers. Did he have a radio or anything? Mm-mm, he's just sitting in front of the fireplace. Wow, bless his <laughs> heart. He is fine. But I, I just, I, I wanted to re-record this because I didn't think that number one, it wasn't as good as it could have been because we were, we were dog tired we that were day. Tired. Friday nights are kicking our ass. Huh? They are Friday nights Man. and and Saturday nights almost now is is because our week is so busy. We're trying to work on on this stuff on the weekend and like I was telling you. Uh, earlier in the week, you know, I, I'm dealing with a severe case of burnout, you know, and I'm not, this is fun. I love this. I could do this all the time, working on this stuff and doing research and, and hanging out with you and discussing things with you. That's all great. I, I love it, but it's just a mundane everyday schedule of things, school, work, dinner, work, home, well, and today, back to bed. You know, today's been a weird day anyway oh, it's, it's been, been very busy busy ass weekend but it is it is you know i mean it, the good thing is is we both smell like smoked meat yeah and hey. so like just sitting here i can smell Hungry. it like <laughs> yeah. i i i love i love cooking stuff too i didn't mind i didn't mind all that stuff but it was it's been a busy weekend i think it's because the weather's warming back up and once we get back into the swing of things, I'll be, I'll, I'll feel better, but I'll definitely feel better when I go on vacation. And the good news is we can do this on vacation. You know, we can, we can take the show we on the road. an episode in the car. Yeah. Hey, like we just not a bad idea. Have it driving and talking. You know, they got those GoPros you can uh-huh. focus on, you know, put on the, which, Hey, there's another emergency provision I might want. I might want battery operated cameras, Yeah. you know, <laughs> but, uh, so I I, I want to I, I I love this whole deal and the fun that this whole brings. But if an emergency situation happened, we don't have enough battery power to run this whole deal. And like if we were to lose power right now, we might lose their computer too. I'm on it's on a surge protector, but those aren't guaranteed. You know, um, I, I worry about that sometimes. I I'd like to have a backup battery pack for the for the computer just in case you know yeah. so that way if something does happen you have a little bit of time to shut it down and and get it clear before you know you lose complete power that's what they they have these battery backup units for computers that i'd like to have but what we always make sure that we've got a battery pack charged up 
you know, we always make sure that we have phones charged. You know, we don't have any flashlights because we have our phones, but I'd like to have some flashlights, some cheap ones and some batteries. You know, it's not that it's, it's, you can get the cheap little emergency flashlights at the dollar store for like five bucks. You know, I know they're not a dollar anymore, but you can still get batteries for a couple bucks, I think, you know, and I say, I think, cause I don't really, we, we use those rechargeable batteries, those, uh, A's and triple A's or double A's and triple A's. We use those a lot, but we don't really use those bigger, bigger batteries because we use our phones for flashlights. Yeah. We don't have any candles, you know, no. and, because we've always got our phones, you know, but w- what if our phones don't work? You know, what if, uh, what if we were unprepared for a power outage and it was at the end of the day and before we got a chance to plug in our phones out of fuel, you know, we don't have any way to light our way. Well, I mean, part of that problem is, is we got kids ex- uh, obsessed with blowing out candles. Yeah. Yeah. And that we like, do. Oh, happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and that's always fun. <laughs> but. We, we used to have some of those tea candles, or yeah, I think they're called tea candles, aren't they? Some. Those little bitty bastards. Yeah, tea light candles. Tea lights, or yeah. yeah. We used to have a bunch of those, but I don't know why we had a bunch of them. Maybe jack o' lanterns or something. Your mom had bought us a bunch of them. Yeah. But we don't, we got rid of those or used them all. Yeah, they burn up real quick, too. Your mom had gotten us some battery operated ones also to put in lantern, yeah. you know, pumpkin, or jack-o'-lanterns. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember those because we still have a couple of those running around here, but she gave us a bunch of them. But uh, there's those things even in an emergency. We don't have any matches. Yeah. You know, we've got, we've got lighters and lighter fuel, but we don't have any matches. You know, I've got, I've got several different ways to light fires. I've got so many ways to light fires. So I'm not too worried about that, but we don't have any emergency lighting other than our phones. Yeah. And these don't take much power. We could run those as long as we're not running, you know, a microwave at the same time. But uh, it, I, it just freaks me out sometimes being ill prepared. And I couldn't imagine being as unprepared as a lot of people that I see out there that, you know, like, it, it, your car in the winter time it's it's always a good idea to carry emergency provisions in your car anyway like jumper cables and you know like a right now we have a whole big bag of salt in the trunk yeah yeah and <laughs> the reason why i bought it was to spread it but i was like hey we could use some weight in the back of, uh, yeah. of the vehicle <laughs> so until we need it that's where it's going to stay yeah so um But you should always have stuff like, you know, jumper cables and, you know, phone charger in your car, um, just, uh, just in case of emergencies. And during the winter time, it's a good idea to put blankets in there, a couple, you know, when you leave the house, take a bottle of water with you, you know? Well, Uh, and if, especially if you're traveling somewhere during a storm, you need to pack like an extra bag, just be prepared to stay be prepared yeah be prepared to not only just stay in your car but stay wherever you're going just in case you can't get home you know you never know you know there's been times where and we live just you know what is it five miles away from your work Mm -hmm. your your main job we live like five miles away and there's been times where hey throw you an extra pair of clothes in there just in case you can't get home you know you might need to stay you know and then and your job is one of those jobs that we're it doesn't matter what happens. People have to go. Mm-hmm. It's not a manufacturing job. They it's, don't close. They don't close. It's one of those, one of those jobs that you people have to be there, or, you know, bad things can happen. So, you you, you got to go. You got to be at work. You know, and and sometimes it it might be a little difficult to get there. But we have several different ways for you to get there we plan ahead for hey we know a big storm's coming in i might need a ride so we call a couple different people and 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 prepare for that just in case we knew this winter storm was coming you know this last time and i checked with our son he's got a four-wheel drive hey if we can't make it up the hill we you know be around to take ashley to work yeah yeah we'll be there and 
you know, we we asked yeah, the using. we asked a coworker, <laughs> you know, hey, hey, if I can't get home, can you get me home? You know, we've done stuff like that just recently. And so it, I know a lot. I know some people that don't even do that. They don't plan for how they're going to get to work. They don't plan for extra time to get to work, and it causes issues. You know, last thing in the you know, the, the, they wait to the last minute and they go out to start their car 15 minutes before they got to be at work. Oh, and the car won't start. You know, and I know that happens in good weather let alone bad weather. But if you know the bad weather's coming, mm -hmm. you might want to go out and try to start your car a little early. You know, that way, if it doesn't start, you have enough time to call for a ride or call an Uber, you know? Yeah. Or some people don't even attempt. Like they're like, oh, there's a snowflake. Nope. I'm <laughs> going uh, back to bed. <laughs> I've, I've, I've seen... They purposely don't prepare. I've seen people just... Uh, and I, I've been one of those people that just walk out the door and nope and walk back in. But that's the uh, uh, glory of being your own boss. No. Yeah. I mean, I did get frustrated, you know, that one day when I had to take Sully to the eye doctor and I got down the hill, but then I couldn't get back up the hill. And I thought, nope, I'm not, I'm not doing this. I'm not tearing up the car to get to a yeah. eye appointment yeah. that I could reschedule. So yeah, that was, that was, I bet that was difficult because I was, I didn't want to go out there either. Well, I mean, like, how are you just going to push the car up the hill? I, so. well, I, I've done it. <laughs> That's something I have done. You know, we, and just for no other reason, but we needed to go to work. I have pushed that car up the hill. Yeah. And we had plenty of time to get there. It wasn't a time situation, but we just needed to get there. And I was like, oh, hey, we're, we're going to. You, you get over here. I'm going to push it up the hill. <laughs> so, but, and we've done that. But it, it's just one of those things that we do that I'm willing to do. I'm willing to put myself, you know, in that situation to get to work. And a lot of people aren't like that. A lot of people, some people I know are yeah. like that. But they, I need my paycheck. So. Yeah. You need your paycheck. And I want to save my PTO time. For actual vacation. Actual Not vacation and emer emergencies. Yeah. You know, you prepare for emergencies by having PTO that you can use just in case you absolutely 100% can't get there. Yeah. So I, that's part of being prepared for emergencies is, is having the PTO time to use during an emergency. You know, that way if you have a big snowstorm not only a, you don't have any power you you lost all, not only all that but you've now you've lost your job so you're out of a way to take care of yourself and so now you have no money no food no heat no no power and think about how how much easier it would have been to get out of all that mess had you just prepared for all that yeah. and and saved a day or two of PTO time. Now I know it's not the solution for everybody. There's people going to be out there that, that emergencies seem to happen every day, <laughs> but you know, those, those are the type of people that, uh, if they're good enough at their job, it usually balances out at the end. <laughs> yeah. Because we understand extern extenuating circumstances happen and nobody can be prepared, be prepared for everything all the time. You know, even when you are the most prepared person on earth, something that you weren't prepared for is going to happen. But all the preparation that you've done to get you there is what's going to get you to the finish line. Right. So if you're used to being prepared, if you're used to dealing with situations that might throw a wrench in the works, you're prepared. You you know what to do. And you're, you're not sitting there twiddling it. Well, what do I do? The power is out and then, you know, I'm not going to have any heat for a while or not going to have any air conditioning. So prepare yourselves, you guys go to the store and you know, if, if you don't have any money, it's okay. Um, we, everybody, we all get it, but there's, a, I know lots of places where you go to the food bank and, and get canned goods that nobody likes. Well, and I know like our warming stations here or our cold weather shelters, they call them like they serve hot meals. Yeah. 
absolutely. And we have a food kitchen right down the street, you know. At, I mean, it's not down the street from us, but <laughs> <laughs> it's downtown. Downtown. But uh, we there's 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 resources and help out there for those that absolutely can't get that. And and but those are the people that are usually the most prepared for stuff. Like that's how I got to be the way I am is being poor, growing up poor. And I mean, there was two or three years we didn't have gas well, at our house. And like so. you know, growing up, my mom worked. For, well, was a state employee and so she got paid once a month so we went to the grocery store once a month so we bought canned goods for a month <laughs> right and we actually grew a lot of our own food when i was you know when i was in grade school we grew a lot of our own food during the uh spring and summer months harvest in the fall and then we'd use that during the during the winter so we didn't have to buy food still cost money to buy seeds but it was like negligible well, and it's like, I wish I knew how to can food. Like, I understand it, but I've never done it. I know how. It's very simple. And so I know you got to, like, boil boil the cans so the lid seal. and. Yeah, but I also yeah. know how to seal them with wax because yeah. I was that poor. <laughs> I was, we were so poor that we couldn't, uh, We you know, the, the seal, the lids, those are disposable. You mm-hmm. can't use them more than once. You got to use them and toss them away. Well, it was... I, you could buy a block of paraffin wax for like 10 cents back then. <laughs> and um, my mom, she would take a few blocks of paraffin wax and drop it in the, uh, drop it in the, the, in the, a pan and melt that paraffin wax and wait till the, the, whatever she was, whatever she was canning to cool a little bit. And then she'd, She'd pour that paraffin wax on top, and it'd make a nice seal. So I even know how to do that. So in case, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm I'm a, I'm a city kid, uh, you know. Because when you met me, I was most one of the most city kids you ever met, huh? Mm-hmm. And now that you, we've been together for 17 years, you realize this this guy's living in the middle of the city, but he's a homesteader. <laughs> I'm really not. It's just I grew up poor, and that's why I know how to do all these things. It's just I've done it all my life, you know. And I, you like know, you taught me how to make brown sugar. Absolutely, I did. <laughs> I remember that because you were like, "Oh, I got to go to the store. I'm out of brown sugar," and I was like, "No, wait, wait a minute. You got hold molasses. on. You got molasses? Yeah. You got sugar? Yeah. Well, you got brown sugar. You're like, what? I was like, look it up." If you got molasses and sugar, you got brown sugar because that's all brown sugar is, is molasses and sugar. You're yeah. like, really? Yeah, and that's, I didn't, I don't know where that came from. That knowledge just popped out that day. <laughs> I, I, there was a couple other people that we had at the house, and they were they were impressed that I knew that because they were cooks themselves and didn't know. Yeah. And uh, well, that's <laughs> tricks of growing up poor. We made our own cinnamon. You know, we oh, were yeah, so, what were we talking about with cinnamon that one day? I don't remember. It was something you were at work <sighs> and we were talking about something and I said, Hey, I even know how to make cinnamon. Ground them cinnamon sticks up, sugar in it. So I, I had to do that when I was a kid. We yeah. had cinnamon sticks and sugar, but no, no cinnamon. Yeah. Cause I remember, cause I read your message and I was like, my husband had to make his own cinnamon. <laughs> oh, because we were talking about cinnamon sugar, how... Now you can buy the cinnamon and sugar already oh, yes. pre-mixed. The cinnamon, and my, and my I said sister, we were fancy. My sister actually showed us that, and I, I'm, I, we didn't even discover that. She had bought some cinnamon sugar, and she had had it over here for whatever reason. And I was like, yeah. I, I, you were telling me about that because you discovered that. Well, and I think, I think you'd call me at work because you were like, what should I make oh, rocket yeah, for breakfast? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, making like cinnamon sugar toast. And you were like... Well, how much cinnamon do I mix with the sugar? And I was like, oh, no, it's already like in the cabinet, in the shaker. And you were like, oh, my God, when I was a kid, we had to like grind our own cinnamon and make our own. Yeah, I know how to do it that way. Sugar. but. And then I was like totally amazed. I was like, my husband was grinding cinnamon sticks to make his own cinnamon. And one of the one of the few people that I know that it would I'd almost rather make our own bread than buy it from the store because yeah, it does taste better. It does taste better. But. And just being prepared like that, it, it doesn't hurt anything, and it doesn't cost anything to have that knowledge. 
to know, hey, I need to check the weather. It's winter time. You should probably check the weather at least at least once a week, if not three, four times. I check the weather at least once a day. And that's usually because I want to find out what it's doing when I walk out the door or how cold it cold is. It Do is. I need a jacket? You know, it. look at your long range forecast, you know, familiar, familiarize yourself with your weather apps. Yeah. I, I mean, like I'm really good about doing that in the winter. I don't do it really in the summer because I'm like, eh, you never know. One day it could be a hundred. The next day it could be 50. Yeah, I Missouri. don't worry about it so much during the winter time or during the summertime. In a lot of times we have pop up thunderstorms here that nobody, nobody saw coming anyway, but it's not, being prepared for summer is, in my opinion, a little easier than winter because if we if we don't have power during the summer, it's not going to affect us all that much. So we might be hot, but it's not going to be dangerously hot for us where it would be for the elderly. Yeah, you know, even even little kids. Well, because the year rocket. Well, yeah, because rocket was born in May. And remember that. I think that August or whatever. Yeah, we lost power out. that day or that year too. I, uh, I we lost power that year and <clears throat> our air conditioner broke. And the at the time, our landlord was very concerned because he knew we had a baby and he had somebody over here like that day fixing it. No landlords anymore. We bought it. We paid now way I, too much. Now for we have it, to but. fix our own air conditioner. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right because I know a wonderful HVAC guy. Yeah. And I, hey, as a matter of fact, I could probably call him if we had an issue and he could walk me through how to fix it over the phone. Yeah. From what was he 900 miles away? Something like that. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So being prepared, knowing people that can help and in, in, like, well, we don't have any money. If air conditioner was to go out, you know, I could pay somebody to come over here and fill it with Freon or whatever, but just having a diag diag fee that's expensive mm -hmm. you know just to just to have somebody come over and look at it to be at least 65 dollars you know and then to diagnose it and to get the parts and fix it and by the end of the day you're looking at probably three four hundred dollars just for something simple you know imagine if something was wrong with it <laughs> you know sixty five hundred dollars no that was sixty five hundred dollars buy you a brand new <laughs> hvac system buy a brand new HVAC or brand new air conditioner and pay half the furnace. I think, I think we could actually replace everything we got here. Cause it's, it's low square footage. There's not much to it. It's pretty simple. I think I, we could probably replace it for $6,500. Yeah. But, uh, that's, we know people, you know, if, if our roof was to the shingles was to blow away and we didn't have insurance and, didn't we we have friends that i know that help me out you know my village would come to the rescue at that point you know <laughs> they, they y'all better because those villagers don't want to watch kids those villagers bleh, villagers just know how to do things hey that's okay we don't need to wipe noses or nothing i just need to build me a house no <laughs> I like being prepared. I love being prepared for things, even when I'm not prepared. I don't feel like I'm prepared now for anything because, you know, we, we just used up a lot of our provisions, you know, that we got for in preparation of winter because we had storms. None of no, Nobody wanted to leave the house. I still don't want to leave the house, but I'm, I've got cabin fever. I'm stir crazy going in here, you know, going like just the just the just yeah. the weather the, the weather has been so cloudy and just unsatisfactory you have so much cabin fever that you caught a live mouse last I week i did i did that little <laughs> and then he froze to death out in the weather yeah he did yeah i gathered it up in a bag there. and carried it outside and said, <laughs> nope not in my house <laughs> You don't have Didn't to bear the give him a chance to brave the elements. Make it back in. Nope. I, <laughs> you asked me, you were like, you said something about, hey, why'd you leave that out there? Hey, it's a sign for all the others. <laughs> Stay away. <laughs> Stay away. My house. But uh, so I, I wanted to share a little bit of that. I'm not really attacking anybody here. Just I'm, I'm just trying to share a little bit of knowledge 
that I've gathered over the years from being poor, from going without power for a little bit and, and, and things that I could have done differently at that time to prepare a little better. You know, one thing I touched on that I didn't quite finish my thought was the cars. Carry blankets in your car. If you got to, you know, leave in the house, grab a bottle of water, make sure you got jumper cables. You know, make sure you're at least a Ice little scraper. bit more prepared than you would have been with nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if you can't go all out and prepare for what you feel like is every emergency. And if, and if you feel like you're prepared for every emergency, I promise you, you're not. Uh, if you're, that's just that much more prepared that you are. It's better than no preparation at all. It's better than going out there and winging it and dying. Well, and also, so I remember this one time when I was really young and I lived over in Kansas, like far away in Kansas. And I was driving on the interstate from work back home and it was sloshy and snowy out and lots of semis were throwing up the slush onto my car and I was out of wiper fluid and I could not see in front of me at all. Like no matter how uh, much I turned the wipers on, like I couldn't see, I had to pull over and I think I found like a blanket in my car and I had to use it to clean my windshield. In those situations, extra wiper fluid. In those situations, if, if, if you have nothing else, get out and grab a handful of snow and use snow. Yeah, it was awful because I thought, well, I'll get behind a semi and like it'll slosh some stuff up. No, it just no, made, made it, it worse. worse. Yeah, and I ran into that situation last uh, uh, was it last week or the week before. You had ran us out of washer fluid, <laughs> and there was no washer fluid. So I had, to, hey, is there any money in the bank? I guess get some washer fluid. And you're like, yeah, there's some in there. I had yeah. to stop and get washer fluid because you, you ran us out and didn't get as any. It's kind of like... When, I just thought it was frozen. And when, no, when you need <laughs> gas, you pass right by the gas station too, don't you? It'd be all right. <laughs> I'll worry until that light you, comes on. You say, oh, I'll get it when I go to work. And then, yeah. you know, like, that's oh, one of those cold. one of those mornings where something happens and you're running a little bit late or, or something. I don't, I'll stop on my way home and then you're out of gas. Yeah. You know, before we bring this episode to a close, this is... You know, this is our regular recording days. You know, this is our second podcast of the day that we're recording. And uh, so a little bit, maybe a little bit shorter, you know, than our, our regular Monday show. But we're going to try to give you a little bit of, of extra show here. We're going to try to do at least two shows a week now, at least two shows. And we're going to try to do some short videos here and there of coffee reviews and stuff. We're going to try to get that going out. I'm working on some guests right now. We're waiting on some weather to give us some breaks to get some people in and out of here. Uh, I don't really have anybody that is famous or anything like that. I'm just interesting people doing interesting things, inspiring conversations. But before we get out of here, I wanted to give some people the... I got some, I compiled a list of websites here that might be helpful in the event of, of preparing for emergencies and what, what emergencies can come up during the winter, during the summer, what to watch out for and, and maybe, you know, check into this stuff and get a little bit, you know, read, do, do some research and try to be a little bit better prepared next time than you were this time. And just try to get a little better every time. But some of those websites, ready.gov, that's a government website. It's public facing that tells you about watches, warnings, what they all mean, uh, winter time, how to stay safe, how to stay prepared during the winter time. Um, there's, it's, they got information on wildfires, earthquakes. There's all kinds of stuff on that website that is ready.gov. Check that out, guys. It, it was it was really helpful for me. I, I checked it out, and I got a lot of helpful information on there, even some information about storms and stuff that I didn't know. There's some helpful uh, information on what watches mean, where, you know, what my watches mean at what times, watches, warnings, you know, what basically the difference between watches and warnings mm-hmm. and stuff like that is what I'm trying to say. Redcross.org. That's a website for the Red Cross. And, you know, we all know what they do. 
you know, not only does the Red, the Red Cross doesn't only do things here in the United States. They also are a worldwide organization that does lots of stuff worldwide. So if that's, I, you know, one of those slush fund type things that I don't really like to get to donate to, if you don't, you know, if you don't feel like donating anything or whatever to the Red Cross, they do have some wonderful resources to on that website that you could check out and tell you uh, ab about preparedness about where you can find red cross stations in the event of an emergency um and and if an emergency happens in your area that website will give you information on how to contact the red cross and, and maybe get some help and some resources if something happens weather.gov that that is also another government website facing the public. Gives you all kinds of different information on weather and how to stay prepared for the weather, what happens during emergency weather situations, and and what you can do to stay ahead of the weather. There is AAA. I don't know if that's AAA.com or you know, if you just type in AAA to, to Google to bring up uh, it'll bring something up anyway. I, I believe it's AAA.com. Yeah. yeah, it has lots of resources. Um, highway information. Um, know your highway patrol. Anywhere you're at, I think there's a number that we can you can dial on the highway. Or there's lots of signs up on the highway about, uh, you know, tune in to AM station, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. and, or for roadside assistance. Absolutely. Or and if it's an emergency, dial 911. Absolutely dial 911 in the event of an emergency. But state, state and local resources, wherever you're at, uh, whether it be on vacation or home or visiting fa friends and family, know your state and local resources wherever you're at, but especially at home. You know, it's always a good idea to have not emergency numbers for your local fire department and your, uh, your local police department. It's a good idea to have the non emergency numbers for your local hospitals, you know, and, and your state organizations that help in the event emergencies, stuff like that. It's always a good idea to find that stuff, find your cold weather shelters and your, your, your hot weather shelters, find those local areas around you, even if you're on vacation, if you're on vacation and it may be, you know, in, in Florida, talk about Florida a lot and how it's on the surface of the sun. If you're down in Florida on vacation, it might be helpful to find hot weather stations in Florida while you're on vacation, you know, just in case you're out there and you need to cool down. Well, I did see a news article, maybe a clip from a news station in Florida where they were warning Flor warning Floridians 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 that the temperature was going to drop to 53 degrees and that they needed to limit their amount of time outside and dress appropriately for the weather 53 degrees like we would love 53 degrees here right now no kidding I just thought that was funny but, since, you know. so those are some resources that might help in the event of an emergency and also to get prepared for emergencies and to create a plan so and again those websites are ready.gov redcross.org weather.gov aaa.com check all those out and the worst thing that can happen is you run into a bunch of information and stuff you already knew <laughs> you know so that doesn't hurt to check them out it doesn't hurt to be prepared Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know where your emergency water shutoff valve is, don't find it. Me. Find it. If you don't know where your 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 power box is, your your disc your your breaker box, find it. You know, and, and if you're renting a place and you don't know where it is or you don't have access, it would be uh, you might might be ahead and you know asking your landlord hey where do i find you know my water shutoff valve where do i find my power box you know your breaker box it's it, it's imperative to know these things and I, I was shocked to find out that you didn't know where our water shutoff valve for the whole house was well how would i know 
I don't go in there. There are spiders. Well. Spiders like the size of my fist. Honey, I'm almost 40, and that's one of those things that I've known since I was a child, and I took advantage, or I, I took for granted the fact that that's one of those things that I know, and it thought that everybody would know those things for some reason. I don't, I don't know why I thought you would know that. We're going to put up a poll. Who knows where their water shutoff is? <laughs> hey. We're on Spotify. Check us out on Spotify. <laughs> Leave us a review. And if you're listening to this all the way at the end, uh, like, subscribe, and share, everybody. Because, uh, like, I, I think only 20% of our listeners on YouTube are subscribed. Yeah. So it, hit that subscribe button. Click that little bell. It'll give you a notification when we're putting out a new uh, episode. But right now, as of right now, we do it every Monday without fail. Every Monday. But 6 a.m. We're going to we're going to put out we're going to start putting out at least two shows per week, and I'm thinking I'm thinking we're going to drop this one on Friday. I think because watching watching some of the you know we've still got viewers and listeners trickling in on Thursday, so yeah. I think once we get used to a schedule here and get used to doing this back and forth and and not worrying quite so much about what other people think or you know i'm I'm just doing my thing here so i I think once we once we get a hang of this and we're gonna be golden it's gonna be great it's already great it's been fun and with that guys we're gonna get out of here take it easy be prepared see you next time bye behoove behoove you how do you say that behoove behoove i don't know who uses that word i don't know obviously not me